like to share with you some sage information about broadleaf sage or salvia officinalis or culinary sage. It is an herb. Um, it is most popular as a seasoning because it's mildly pungent flavor and pleasant aroma. It has these silvery colored leaves silvery green and it's got this soft texture to it. Um, it has like a little bit of um, some kind of like hairy not necessarily hairy but something fuzzy on it. It may be used fresh or dried in stuffing or in pork or cheese dishes. The plant can be used ornamentally for its gray accents in the flower garden. It is described as mildly pungent with a savory flavor and slight pepper taste. It grows in the sun, uh, full sun or partial shade and takes 10 to 20 days to germinate or grow from seed and 70 to 80 days to maturity. Spacing is a spacing requirement is about 12 inches apart and it grows 16 to 24 inches tall at maturity and cut it back um, 6 inches mid season to bring in a layer of a larger harvest. So a lot of herbs if you cut them down when they get too tall then they'll spring up more um, branches and they'll be bushier and you get the benefit of even more herbs and it is best uh, container size is a 12 inch or bigger container um, pick the leaves as you need them and trim them back by half its size in the fall as it begins um, dormancy so it doesn't have to keep putting out energy to to instead the energy will go to the roots uh, suggestions for storage are to cut the top five inches of stalks before flowering in the early summer and dry the leaves in the shade repeat as new growth develops and then sage thrives as a potted plant. So use fresh or dried in stuffing. It forms blue or lavender flowers in early summer and it did indeed and I let it dry and I was going to uh, get the seeds out of them but they just fell right out. Um, probably from my transplanting it out into from the pot into the ground so I did that when it was flowering and then that's why it's kind of suffering because of the transplant um, and it was actually twice the size but I split it off and gave the other half to my sister and it grows as a perennial in zones four through eight it can be grown both in an herb garden or in an or ornamental bed it prefers full sun, sandy, well-draining soil and grows best in dry soil with few nutrients. Water it once or twice a week for the first two weeks after planting and provide water for top six inches of soil between, between that and don't let it get waterlogged when it's mature. Only water it when it's wilting and flowering affects the flavors the flavor of the plant so cut it before it flowers so so that is broadleaf sage and hope you enjoyed that information on it thank you for watching good morning I would like to cover pineapple sage today salvia elegans um, Susan Marr has um, talked about this plant. Its species is in the mint family, Lami Lamiaceae. 
The leaves and flowers are edible and it can be used for tea, jellies, and potpourri. And it draws in pollinators because of the scent. And uh, let me just see. Yes, it has a, a pineapple scent. And I have another plant that smells like pineapple in this garden. It is called the pineapple mint. So this is pineapple sage. And they do have a, a different... They smell like pineapple, but with a, a different uh, base s smell. Um, it draws in pollinators. It's a medicinal... It can be used in a medicinal tea. Uh, for treating anxiety and depression if the leaves are dried and then applied as tea and or it could be a fresh tea as well just um, pull some out of the ground wash them and steep in boiling water with other various herbs and honey um, the le it's also can be used as a landscape plant because of its height, color, and texture. And there indeed is a texture here. Um, uh, it is a perennial in subtropical areas. It requires full sun and it is easy to grow in dry, well-draining soil. It is easy to um, to grow in zones 8 through 11 and it's grown as an annual in cold areas. The leaves smell like pineapple when crushed. It has an open habit and it is a semi woody to herbaceous shrub. It has tall stems that tend to get wind damaged so it needs to be supported or protected under a larger bushy plant or under a tree. Um, the leaves have a soft fuzzy appearance because both surfaces are covered in short fine hairs. So um, that's true. It's kind of a little fuzzy. Um, the species can grow to over five feet tall and three feet wide, but cultivars don't usually get that tall. The plants die back to the ground in frost and grow back in warmer zones. They are fast-growing plants. Several cultivars um, with different colors exist and leaves and flowers. The, it blooms in late summer and early fall and with flowers that have red tubular fl flowers that attract hummingbirds. Where there isn't frost, flowers bloom until spring, so it can bloom in the indoors or in a greenhouse. The flowers give way to small, dark, football-shaped seeds that fall out in um, out of the calyx. So I think that is the same with all the sage family plants because I have a broadleaf sage back there that I'm going to cover that it had blooms, beautiful purple blooms, and then when I went to collect the seeds, I had first transplanted it from the pot into the ground because it was, you know, nicely fully blooming. And um, when I went to collect the seeds from the flowers, they had already all fallen out. So as soon as they start to darken, um, they fall out of the calyx. The flowers bloom sequentially from the bottom up. It can be grown in c containers as well. Um, easier for overwintering, which means bringing it in and protecting it and then returning it outdoors in the spring. There are a few pests, but some are aphids, mealybugs, spider mites that um, tend, to, tend to attack it in the greenhouse. So with that, I hope you try some scented pineapple sage. Thank you for watching. Good morning. I wanted to talk to you about blue anise sage, Salvia guaranitica. Um, it's an upright perennial. It blooms in the summer. 
in full sun, six plus hours of direct sunlight. It is in the mint family, Lemonaceae. It uh, blooms all summer to fall, and the watering conditions are to keep it moist the first year and water it one time per week after that, um, after the first year. So the cold hardiness is zone 7 and it's non-hardy in zones 1 through 6 and it is, um, it requires fertilization in the spring and summer. It is a bushy ornamental shrub with two inches long flowers and a blue or purple or white. It prefers slightly acidic soil, pH 5.5 to 6.5. It draws in butterflies and hummingbirds and bees. And um, we have a little hummingbird nest nearby and the I planted it here so that it can have some nectar and we did get, purchase a, a bottle of nectar to kind of support the recent um, uptick in hummingbirds that are flying around here. Uh, these are easy to grow, they're pest and disease free and they're low maintenance. They're native to Brazil and Paraguay. They're hardy to zones 8 to 10, and it is treated as an annual in cold climates and a perennial in the warmer climates. Um, and it may survive in a, a, a cooler winter in the warmer climates by being protected. It is a heat and drought tolerant plant. It smells like anise when brushed up against it and it thrives in well draining, evenly moist soil. It is deer resistant. It may be grown from seeds in the spring and separated at the bottom. Remove the deadheads to promote more blooms and cut back after flowering season is over. The companion plant for this could be zinnias, verbenas, Boreansis or sedum. Um, it is also known as anise scented sage, Brazilian sage, giant blue sage, and sapphire sage, or hummingbird sage, which is it can be the flowers can be edible and it's non toxic, and however, it has it does not have very much flavor. It may have been used by Indians in Brazil as a sedative. Plants have suckers and may form tubers. Water it regularly in the summer, but don't let it remain wet. It may suffer from powdery mildew or white flies. And that's everything you need to know about blue anise sage. And um, maybe that they have these, like they said, purple, blue, or white flowers, and that the texture of the leaves, it's kind of a little bit rough, and it's, it's full of wrinkles, but yeah, it lends these beautiful flowers, so have a great day. Thank you for watching.